All right, welcome to the session. Welcome to Open World. I uh, hope you're enjoying the conference so far. Um, we're at, the, I think, the end of the day. This is the last session, so I'm going to try and make it as interesting as possible. Uh, for those of you who uh, made it in, it looks like we've got a few people at the bar already, um, but we'll have this recorded as well. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure and uh, some of our latest um, innovations. Um, I'll walk you um, through a little bit of the history of OCI, but first let me talk about um, the cloud today. Um, when users come to the cloud, a typical cloud deployment, um, we think it's way too hard really to get the infrastructure fit right for their services. Um, there's a tremendous amount of um, work that's required to size compute shapes for different applications. Um, that tailoring is usually done with a lot of over-provisioning. And then customers have to turn around and um, validate, make adjustments. If there are load changes in the application characteristics, they have to do all kinds of manual tailoring. And they're choosing among a huge uh, number of permutations of available options in terms of compute shapes and storage that are, uh, that are available in a typical cloud. Um, it's way too hard, uh, and we really at OCR are, are trying to engineer a better and simpler way to manage cloud infrastructure. Um, so one thing we'll talk about is flexibility today. I'll go into that in a lot more depth, but we have um, the concept of flexible VMs that you can tailor dynamically to your needs. Um, we are doing similar work with the storage tier, so uh, we'll talk about our capabilities in terms of um, dynamic, adaptable storage. Um, and generally, we're trying to follow through a theme that OCI has had from the start, which is to make the cloud more autonomous for your workloads. We started that with the database, but we've really emphasized that general theme for the infrastructure as well. <clears throat> So before I get into the, the details of um, some of the new features and capabilities that we're adding in OCI, I want to talk about some of the core tenets that are driving what we do. And, and uh, one of those, and I think first and foremost, is flexibility, right? We have uh, the notion that when you're working with our infrastructure, it should adapt to your needs. You're not locked into a straitjacket. You don't have to determine a priori the perfect fit uh, for the deployments that you're going to use in terms of the compute and storage capabilities, networking capabilities in the infrastructure deployment. Second is ease of use. And uh, by ease of use, we really mean that at OCI, part of our philosophy is that we take on as much of the operational burden as possible for you as a, as a user of the cloud services. Third is security, and consistent really with a the theme we've had from the beginning of OCI's inception, um, our primary goal is to take on the burden of securing the infrastructure uh, for you and making security uh, pr a primitive that you deploy automatically as a part of your application or solution architecture. Um, and lastly, we'll talk a bit about performance. Um, we've engineered, again, uh, OCI from the start to really be a high performance infrastructure and to be able to scale to your needs and to the profile of your applications. Continue to innovate along those lines. Um, now, it's been a couple years that we've been together in terms of cloud world. Uh, it was an interrupt with the pandemic. Um, along the way, over the, 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 the last couple of years, we've had hundreds of features, um, scores of new services, all aimed at making the infrastructure that we're providing more flexible, easier to use, more secure, and uh, more performant. Right? And, and, and I have not listed the hundreds of uh, features and capabilities that we have added into the stack. I think if any of you saw Clay McGurk's uh, keynote this morning, he went through and had a kind of a flash um, spin through of just what we did over the last 12 months. I think there were over 200 different uh, features and capabilities. Um, but we have in each of these core areas really focused on trying to make sure that we're pushing the envelope in terms of innovation and giving the best set of capabilities, or the most unique set of capabilities 
of any cloud providers when we come to these core tenants. We'll be looking at each of these in depth in terms of um, some of the newest and latest innovations that we're bringing to the table. With OCI in general, it really is a different kind of cloud. I mean, we built it from scratch to be significantly different than the first generation of hyperscale cloud infrastructure. So we have uh, public hyperscale regions. We have over 40 globally. Um, we have been able to roll them out as very uh, rapid deployments, primarily because part of our design principle has been treat the cloud as a platform and treat the cloud as a platform that we can replicate, right? Um, those scalable regions have been the basis of uh, the, our initial OCI business, but we've also been able to take that platform concept and provide a couple of unique ways to deliver value to our customers. Um, we are uniquely able to deliver dedicated regions, which are entirely a complete OCI regions delivered directly into a customer's data center. Um, those give you the ability to have a tailored experience from a hybrid cloud perspective, um, but within the context of your own private and secure data center to have the complete 100% uh, uh, service portfolio of the OCI platform. Use every aspect of the cloud that you can do in the public cloud uh, environment but also uh, have it available in a, in a sense that's tailored to privacy requirements, data sovereignty requirements, et cetera. So we've used that as a baseline for how we're um, starting to really make OCI ubiquitous across the globe, uh, address specialized industries that have governance requirements that don't allow them to go to the, private to the public cloud, and also to deal with um, underserved uh, geographies where there are not today already hyperscale uh, regions available. We've also been investing in a multi-cloud architecture that allows us to take these regions, put them close to other cloud providers, and bridge those environments. So we're doing integration work there in terms of security, um, networking, um, auditability, telemetry, logging, et cetera. Um, so the, the experience of using these clouds together gets easier and more productive over time. Now, I'm going to jump in on flexibility as a theme here. We'll go through each of these one at a time. Um, when we look at flexibility, we really mean we want our infrastructure to be adaptive to the needs of your applications and your deployments without you having to do all that manual work um, and trying to optimize in a continuous basis. We want the system to optimize for you. One of the things that we've introduced was a real innovation that OCI brought to the table was this concept of uh, flexible compute shapes. And flexible compute allows you to come in and say, I'm gonna specify how many cores I wanna use, uh, how many cores I need available for this instance, um, how much memory I wanna allocate, based specifically on my application. So I don't have to pick from a portfolio of thousands of different uh, SKUs. I can tailor a given compute architecture or compute shape to the exact uh, resource requirements that I need for my application. And we've extended this, and we'll talk a little bit about this as well, uh, in the storage tier. With block volumes, you know, typical cloud experience, you have to choose between the performance of the block volume. There's different pricing tiers. If it happens, to, if you find that your application requires customization, you actually have to port from one block configuration to another. Um, all that's incredibly time consuming manual work and it puts, it puts users in a position of typically having to overspend and over provision um, for their application workloads. We think that's just completely wrong. Now, flex shapes were an innovation that we brought to the industry, and they're powerful, but they also require you to think through um, how many cores do I actually need for this app? Did I get it right? Well, if I didn't get it right, fine, you can tailor it dynamically, you can adjust it um, to reflect the needs of your application, but we think we can do even better now. So we're putting a new feature out, um, which are unlimited mode for burstable VMs. 
You don't have to do any manual work. You don't have to do any adjustments um, on your side. It's an example of the, the cloud infrastructure becoming more flexible, more autonomous, more adaptable to your workloads. We're doing the same thing at the storage tier. Um, in this case, again, with typical block storage deployments, customers in the cloud have had to go and decide you know, which block storage type are they going to use, how much performance are they going to pay for, uh, and then if they need to make adjustments, they need to do those adjustments manually, do data copying, et cetera. Um, we think this is a bad model. And so we're introduced dynamic auto-tuning for block storage. You can set thresholds for performance, and the system will adapt to load, adjust to performance, and you only pay for the adjustments as they're used. So it's a, another example where we've taken the, the same conceptual framework we've used in terms of our flex compute shapes, and we've, adapt, we've brought that to the storage tier as well. Um, so it's an it's a example of the kind of innovation that we're gonna continue to push forward um, to make the cloud more flexible and adaptable to your workloads, removing the operational burden from the end user. We've been doing quite a bit of work uh, to introduce Ampere into our customer base and really focused on mainstreaming the ARM architecture for the enterprise. We've done this for a reason. Uh, we found that it really is the best price performance um, compute op option in the market. Um, it's highly energy efficient. We're, we at OCI and we at Oracle are adopting Ampere for our own internal usages. We're adopting it within the context of our applications portfolio, our SaaS portfolio. Um, and we're really working to bring those same benefits to our customer base at large. One of our uh, partners here at uh, OCI has been Jeff Wittich, the C C Chief Product Officer at Ampere. I'd like to invite Jeff to come out and tell us a little about the work that uh, Ampere and OCI have been doing together. All right, thanks, Greg. So Ampere is delivering cloud-focused CPUs that deliver unparalleled levels of performance and efficiency. And we've been working the last couple of years with, with Oracle really closely. And because of that, Oracle is the first cloud service provider that has brought the Ampere Ultra cloud native processors to market in a cloud offering. One of the key benefits uh, from the Ampere Ultra processors in the Oracle Ampere A1 instances is the vast amount of compute that we bring to bear with a massive number of cores and CPUs that were actually designed for cloud scalability. This helps to uh, provide the flexibility that Oracle needs from an infrastructure perspective. You can see here it provides incredible scale and flexibility. You can choose between one to 160 cores. You have your choice of memory configurations. And this means that your cloud native workloads aren't constrained whether you're running just uh, one core on one server or many thousands of servers, you have virtually unlimited cores and virtually unlimited flexibility to size the infrastructure the way that your workload demands. In addition to the flexible burstable and preemptible instances, there's also bare metal instances available as well. So let's explore two of the many use cases. The first is an ISV. This is Plesk. Plesk is a part of uh, WebPros, they're a global leader in web hosting platforms. They have 384,000 servers running, they have millions of websites running on their platform, and over 2,500 providers. Now, early in 2022, they took a look at a bunch of the requests that they were getting from customers for new features. They found that they had actually gotten 76 requests uh, to run the Plusk software on ARM-based compute. So they decided they would engage in almost a bit of a skunk works effort to figure out how fast they could get their software moved over to the Ampere Ultra instances, the OCI Ampere A1 instances. It only took them a few weeks to take their software and port it over, uh, optimize performance, and actually bring their platform available as a generally available offering. So they launched it. They went to GA, and in the first three months, 
they had 1,000 instances running, which for Plesk actually represented the fastest product ramp ever that they had seen. So they were able to bring this to market very, very rapidly. They got the flexibility of having uh, virtually unlimited capacity. They are then the first hosting platform in the industry that's running on the Ampere cloud native processors. And they were able to get significant performance benefits as well as the best price performance ratio. Another example uh, concerns AI. Uh, at Ampere, we have a library, a family of software tools called Ampere AI, and it optimizes AI and machine learning performance on Ampere cloud native processors. You can run your existing models uh, within supported frameworks and then out of the box achieve the best possible performance. Ampere AI is available in the OCI marketplace. And when you compare the performance on the Ampere, uh, the o OCI Ampere A1 instances, compared to something like Graviton, you can achieve 2x lower latency, 2x throughput, 2x better price performance than AWS Graviton. So uh, big advantages there, which is what uh, Matoha saw. They're a startup. They have developed a technology that facilitates uh, recycling. They have a uh, technology that uses near-infrared spectroscopy as well as AI models to identify what type of plastic uh, is, uh, is sitting in landfills or in other places. They also have technology that identifies types of fabrics. And so they're very, very reliant on these trained AI models. They migrated over to the uh, OCI Ampere A1 instances in just a few days. They only have a few engineers, so this was a very, very easy effort for them. And the end result was that they were able to reduce the amount of time to train by 30%, and their cost went down by 75%. So this is a great example of how the flexibility of these instances produces no waste. They can right-size the VMs for their workload, and then you have the efficiency to use the entire platform. So two really good examples. I would just remind everybody, uh, there's an Ampere booth. It's number 270 uh, out in the OCI hub. So come on by. We've got examples, demos running of the AI applications, as well as some other demos out there. So back to you, Greg. OK. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so returning to our four themes, um, let me jump back uh, into the flow here. Um, Ease of use, and really when we talk about the ease of use tenant, one, the principle we bring to the table here when we look at our service design, our feature set, et cetera, is how to make it easy for you to develop, deploy, and operate applications uh, with minimal end user intervention and effort, right? So we really try to drive the overall investment that you have to make especially from an operational perspective, down to zero. We have a very flexible topology of choices for deployments. You go all the way from bare metal machines to virtual machines to containers and capabilities like functions, where compute resources are allocated to run application logic on demand. So principle of flexibility is extended into the, the uh, application deployment choices you have. I think where this gets really interesting is when you step into the world of containers, right? Um, containers have really taken the world by storm. What we're finding is that most of the customers that we talk to when they're doing uh, managed container deployments, they're doing it in the cloud. Um, one of our most successful services within OCI is our managed Kubernetes service, Oracle Kubernetes en Engine, OKE. Um, we, we use it internally in our own service implementation. Customers are using it across the board. Um, but we've been looking at ways to make the use of containers even simpler. So one of the new services that we're launching this year are container instances. The idea is you can take a container and deploy it, configure it, make it available just as simply as you can stand up a compute image in OCI. So there's really no learning curve here. You can bring your containers immediately to the table, deploy them, get them up and running, um, and uh, make them available um, just as you would any other kind of compute resource. So simplicity is the key. However, 
It's often the case that when you're working with containers, you need to deal with more complex orchestrations, you have clusters that you need to use. This is where Kubernetes really shines. Right? This is, this is a, uh, the technology that really has become the standard for hosting uh, microservices and allowing end customers, and even within the context of our own service implementations, uh, users to do complicated scenarios for deployments of groups of containers together. Thing about Kubernetes is once you stand it up, you still have to manage the clusters. You still have to do the administration of the Kubernetes environment. We, we want to make it easier, so we now are delivering and we're announcing uh, a serverless Kubernetes environment. You get the full power of the Kubernetes stack for managing containers um, in a completely serverless environment. So it has all the APIs, any of the deployment and um, administrative work or scripting that you may have done against Kubernetes is all supported and available, but the runtime is virtualized. You don't have to worry about administrating a cluster, cluster health, um, keeping track of the underlying resources. We will do that all for you as a part of the service implementation that we're delivering. So we think this is gonna be a great way to allow people to use the heavy lifting capabilities of Kubernetes with containers, but not have to worry about the Kubernetes administration overall. We also have tools, um, Cloud Advisor, that will look at your environment with OCI. They'll look at security, we'll look at um, availability, we'll look at your cost structure, we'll make automatic recommendations. So we're analyzing the OCI deployment environment that you have and trying to make sure that we give you the instructions and the, and the recipes to make it as efficient and secure as possible. Again, simplifying operations where we can't remove the operational burden from you entirely. We want to make sure that we're putting in advanced rules and machine learning capabilities um, in order to make it easier for you to run the environment um, that you deploy inside of OCI. Um, when you have to go deep, we're also giving tools to give you the visibility into the behavior of the infrastructure. Um, for example, we're just announcing for general availability our network command center. This gives you a holistic view of your network deployments. Um, we'll look at the configurations that you have, look for problems or what we think might be uh, optimizations in terms of the configuration, and provide you that troubleshooting and diagnostic uh, information in, about your network setup so that you can optimize your networks. Um, we'll give you full visualization of your network topology so you know what you've deployed and how it's interrelated across subnets um, and across regions. Um, when you're dealing with multiple regions within the OCI environment and passing data back and forth behind, between the, between the regions, we'll have um, real-time feeds available so that you can look at the latency and understand if there are bottlenecks or if there are changes in behavior over time. And we have traffic monitoring, looks at the logs, allows you to look for optimizations, anomalies, and, and also uh, an important source of information about packet flow that can be used for um, security purposes as well. So making sure that uh, you understand what, what is the, the uh, packet flow within your infrastructure end to end. So we're seeing the customers that are adopting um, this infrastructure from an ease of use perspective are really benefiting. Um, so Baguio is a Filipino city that is really centered on tourism. They wanted to make sure that they can continue to offer their services to tourists during the COVID pandemic. They wanted to quickly get an application up um, so to give you some sense of how quickly we can help customers get value with the, the kind of technologies that we're discussing here, they used our Kubernetes implementation, they used uh, our web application firewall and a MySQL backend, and we're able within a week to get a solution that was set up for COVID contact tracing available online on the web at a significant cost reduction from an earlier on-premise deployment of a, a similar kind of capability. Now, the other theme that we've really, really 
built into OCI and built into our methodologies in terms of how we approach um, our services and operations from the start has been security. Uh, if there's one takeaway you have around security and OCI is that it is a fundamental pillar um, that we consider to be um, first and foremost priority from uh, our implementation strategy across the portfolio. When it comes to security, you know, the general philosophy here, number one, is that we, we build in security to the platform at every layer, from the hardware up through the virtualization tier and in the design center of all the services that we offer. We want to make it really easy to get the configuration of those services right so that you can have secure capabilities um, for your end users from the get-go. So we have things like security zones that are auto-configured with security policies um, that are optimized for the application workloads. You don't have to figure out how to tailor and design this, the right security settings. Uh, we also have tools that are built in to OCI to monitor your tenancy, things like CloudGuard that look at your deployments and monitor them actively for security considerations, both in terms of patterns of usage um, and the overall configurations that are set up for um, your infrastructure services. All this is built into a unified environment so you can visualize and understand what's happening when it comes to your security posture. And importantly, our security is not an add-on, it's not an extra cost. We want that peace of mind um, and that guarantee to be a part of the infrastructure experience that all of our customers use internally, externally, applications, end customers, enterprises, governments, et cetera. One of the things that we're introducing in terms of new innovations that are coming is what we call confidential computing. Um, we've been working with partners like AMD to provide encryption in memory. So if you have uh, applications or scenarios that require extra security uh, in extra encryption capabilities, um, we're making sure that that's there as a part of the platform and that as an end user, you can use our confidential VMs and get that extra layer of encryption and confidentiality within the context of your deployments. We've also been working with Palo Alto Networks. So we have a new network firewall service. Um, it's been a, a feature that we're rolling out to customers now. It allows us to do uh, malware detection, spyware detection, and really look for uh, vulnerabilities on the front end of the system. Um, this has been an in-demand technology. Palo Alto has been a great partner, and uh, we're pretty excited to see this launched right here at Open World. Motorola, one of our customers, uh, had brought uh, e-business suite deployment that they had on-premise into OCI. One of their key criterias for their migration was uh, a security environment and enhanced security controls. Um, we were able to show them that the and security standards that they were looking for were a part of OCI's deployment. They brought their platform um, onto OCI from an on-premise environment. They had a 15% reduction in their overall cost in terms of managing uh, their security uh, spend. And that was a byproduct of the extra security capabilities that we brought, built into the infrastructure and made available to them from the get-go. Now, um, the last theme that I want to touch on is performance. Now, high performance um, has been a part of OCI's design center from its inception. And I'll tell you a little bit about where we've come from and then some of the investments that we've made um, to continue to really advance the state of the art in terms of cloud performance for different kinds of workloads in OCI. Um, for those of you who've been using OCI for some time, you know that we built it differently from a performance perspective. Um, you know, if you look at our networking architecture, we did off-box virtualization, so we don't have a conflict between 
um, the workloads that we have to administer in terms of our network virtualization and the compute resources that you're deploying also gives us better security and isolation. We had a different kind of a network architecture from the start as a non-blocking network architecture, a flat network architecture that allowed us to reduce the number of hops between machines and to reduce jitter uh, between tenants that you would see typically in a, a earlier iteration of, of cloud network implementations. We've had direct point-to-point uh, -point networking within the, the cloud from the early days, one of the deployment architectures we needed to support was Exadata. So we needed to have RDMA, uh, RDMA fabric and uh, cluster networking. This has been a core part of our um, implementation strategy uh, from, our, from our inception with OCI. So a good example of this is uh, our RDMA cluster networking, right? So interesting model here because what we allow you to do is effectively build on the fly supercomputers, right? So we can put together uh, networks uh, over high bandwidth IP fabric um, using RDMA. The node to node communication is reduced to about 1.5 microsecond latency, so ultra low latency. And we can scale out clusters, HPC clusters, up to today, 512 GPUs. And for CPU-based clusters, we can scale them up to 20,000 GPUs. It's been very popular with customers, um, both in terms of artificial intelligence um, scenarios, machine learning, um, and then with our HPC um, deployments. One of the things that we're announcing now uh, is in, in uh, uh, part of our investment with our uh, partners at NVIDIA are the availability of the latest A180 gig uh, GPUs. They're uh, now available in OCI. Um, why is this important? There's been a real, I think, revolution that's occurred in Computing, I think really after cloud, the most important thing that's developed over the course of the last uh, decade has been the development of uh, deep learning architectures for artificial intelligence. Uh, deep learning ar architectures require a fairly large assembly of compute capabilities um, where data is passed through a network, kind of a graph of uh, neural networks. And uh, in order to process all the data that goes through a neural network efficiently, it really requires a GPU. You need to, you're doing a lot of matrix math. It requires matrix acceleration. And that's, that's really what GPUs do. Before we had broad availability of GPUs for machine learning, we were really limited in types of problems that we could solve. But now with the availability of GPUs, especially high performance GPUs like the A100s, we can solve a whole array of computer vision problems, um, speech analytics, um, natural language processing um, that in the past was largely theoretical. And by making it available in the cloud, um, we are giving customers the ability to spin up these neural networks, take advantage of this massive computational capabilities of the latest generation of GPUs, and solve increasingly sophisticated problems around artificial intelligence. So this is a uh, really, I think, in, in, you know, after, the, after cloud in terms of its impact on the industry, I think this latest generation of deep learning capabilities is really going to be uh, the broadest impact of the, tech in, uh, the technology uh, industry and innovation uh, on the business landscape overall. So we're, we're really excited to have the latest iteration of, of GPUs for uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning training available on OCI. We're also introducing uh, another version of the GPU, the A100 from NVIDIA, as a part of um, our platform. These, A these A10s are um, oriented toward graphic processing, media streaming, um, you know, a set of problems that are um, less power consumptive and um, uh, somewhat less um, compute intensive than what we do with the A100s, um, but they're also important for artificial intelligence applications as well. 
Um, typically, after you build the model, when you're doing AI training, you're using these really compute intensive A100s, you generate the model. When you're gonna do inferencing work and scoring, you still use GPUs in many cases. And A10 are um, the perfect fabric, really the perfect platform uh, for doing that kind of workload within uh, OCI. Just sticking with the theme of performance overall, I also wanted to announce the availability of the OCI content delivery network. Different set of problems than artificial intelligence and machine learning training. Really, this is about um, internet-facing applications and how to efficiently get content to users at scale. Um, but we now have a global content delivery network as a part of OCI. And for customers that are doing internet-facing application deployments, um, this is a way really to accelerate the delivery and accelerate the performance of applications, looking at a whole new generation of capabilities for edge applications uh, and edge application architectures as well. So with that, I wanted to kind of introduce one of our customers here, um, SoundHound, and invite Zubin Arani, their chief revenue officer, to come out on the stage and talk about their experiences with OCI. Hey, Zubin, thanks for coming. Uh, so tell us about SoundHound. Tell us about your business. Tell us about what you're solving for as a company. Yeah, so SoundHound is a, a voice AI, the only independent voice AI company that's helping businesses across multiple industries uh, integrate their conversational AI into their products and services. Uh, we were founded in 2005. Our founders, you know, founded actually in Stanford in the, in the dorm room. Um, and over the last 17 years, you know, we became a public company. We're, we're, we deliver our technology in 38 languages to some of the biggest brands like Mercedes, Pandora, Snapchat, and Vizio. What's your experience been like on the cloud overall? Like, how, how has the company evolved, and, and what have you done in terms of taking advantage of cloud infrastructure? Yeah, so obviously, you know, we've, we've been on the cloud for, for, for quite a while, um, and in, with various vendors, we've, we've pretty much tried them all. And I think they all have their, their own limitations, whether it's, you know, kind of some rigidity around the architecture, some complexity around um, setup. And I think some of the, the more notable challenges are around performance. When you get to scale, you find some underlying um, challenges within that. We've definitely run into those issues um, al along the journey, I think, you know, and obviously moving to OCI has been, you know, I think really beneficial for us from both the performance, you know, as a scale standpoint, we're, we're doing a couple billion, billion transactions um, you know, a year, and um, you know, we have to have millisecond response times. And of course, we're, we're doing, so we're doing a lot of training and inferencing we're using bare metal GPU, GPUs, and, and we've seen a 50% lift on the performance of that, as well as a cost savings. And for us, the cost savings you know, and the performance lift is, is really important for us because we're hitting that hyper growth. And so as we grow, we don't want our cost to exponentially grow, and we need our, our system's performance to stay at the millisecond level. Um, it's because something like voice, which is extremely complex, requires, you know, sub-second response times every single time. And, you know, if you, if you were to say uh, what's the best aspect of the transition you, you've had or the experience you've had with OCI overall, how would you frame that? What would, what would your... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, so, you know, one of the... Most people would be surprised. Like, I think as a partner, Oracle's been fantastic to work with. Like, the people at Oracle have been tremendous. I think the technology, you know, you guys... Security first is built in, and security is really important to us. You know, our voice data is PII. Um, our IP is extremely, you know, we put $400 million into building our, our IP. So the security, the scalability has been phenomenal in terms of the resilience and, and performance. And, and what's next for SoundHound? Uh, we got big ambitions. Like, like I said, we're, we're at that knee of the curve. <laughs> mm -hmm. we're, we're growing into multiple industries. We're doing a lot of work in the restaurant space. And actually, you know, I think this is one of the, talk about partnering with Oracle. Oracle has a big uh, food and beverage industry, which, you know, we've been introduced to through our account manager. And we've, we've met a number of folks internally at Oracle and introduced even some of their clients, or your clients, I should say. And, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing to grow. We went public this year, and so we've got a a bright journey ahead of us. Uh, a lot of work to do. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> tough market to do it in, but you know we're we're at that, that juncture, and uh, we're we're really excited about the future. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Really great to hear about your experiences. Thank, thank, thank you. you. 
you know, that, that does raise uh, another key point, I think, with OCI, which is uh, Oracle has a rich portfolio of applications uh, and uh, application infrastructure, um, not just the, the storage, networking, and compute that I've been talking about today, um, but the bringing them together in a single platform um, and being able to integrate custom solutions, custom applications like SoundHound has, um, with other assets that are also a part of OCI is one of the, the unique value propositions of the platform and of the company as a whole. So it's really exciting to hear about that. Um, so let me just quickly then recap, you know, the, the key themes, key messages here. Um, you know, we have been engineering OCI in a very deliberate way with uh, very concise prioritization schemes. We are looking at making sure that as we enable our customers to move forward on our platform, we're focused on flexibility. We want to make it so that the infrastructure is adopting to your needs automatically. Um, we are working to make the platform overall easier to use, going serverless, doing more to support containers, making sure that you really understand your architecture and your deployments and how to optimize them when we can't do it for you. Um, we'll continue to make those kind of investments uh, incrementally as we go. Um, security has been a major theme for us from the get-go, and uh, we are building it into every layer of the stack. We're also giving you tools so you can guarantee your environments are secure, and you have the ability to monitor the activity, the configurations, um, and, and be aware of what kind of usage patterns are happening in your infrastructure so that security control point where, where, where we, we move beyond the infrastructure is something that you have a handle on. And we've been investing from day one in high performance scenarios. We continue to look at that fundamentally from a broad horizontal infrastructure perspective, and we're going deeper and deeper into specialty domains or unique, uh, unique applications like artificial intelligence, um, like media streaming, to make sure that as your applications and solutions modernize and take advantage of the latest technology innovations in the industry, OCI is the platform that gives you the best performance, the best price performance profile in the industry. So thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show and uh, look forward to working with you uh, as a partner as we move forward together. <laughs>